Thank you so much. Um, it's good to be here. Uh, so a lot of my comedy is about being gay, uh, which I am. <laughs> be weird otherwise. Uh, so uh, I'm gay, right? And I've realised I've got a type. Um, my, my type is is waiters. It's just all all waiters. You know, they're beautiful people. You know, I think I look at waiters the way dogs look at their owners. You know, like you're where food magically comes from. <laughs> And I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Um, but it's difficult if you fall in love every time you go to Nando's. Like, you never know how much to tip. Like, how much you tip sort of five, ten. Last week I tipped 15 engagement rings. Uh, is that too much? It's too much. Yeah. Someone nodding there like, yeah, five is, five is the limit. Um, so I'm gay, right, but I'm also from Essex. So I've got a, like a lot of sort of straight guy friends, you know. And they sort of see me as their go-to gay. You know, I'm, I'm their man on the inside. Uh, of other men, specifically. <laughs> yeah, they tend to ask me questions. The, the conversation goes a bit like this. Uh, Tell me if this is homophobic. <laughs> and then they say something homophobic. Uh, uh, I think the best question I got recently, right, a friend of mine said, um, when you're getting down to it with a bloke, do you ever feel a sense of competition in the cock size department? He goes, do you ever have a moment where you say, I win? <laughs> I was like, no, I've never won. <laughs> so I wanted to talk a little bit about last year. Um, you know, I had a lot of spare time on my hands, as most of us did. Um, and I, I got so sucked into self-improvement. You know, the first lockdown, I was so ambitious. I was like, I'm going to get shredded and I'm going to learn Italian. Um, and by the end of the lockdown, I was, as the Italians would say, uh, a big tubby boy. <laughs> glad, glad that got a good response tonight. Sometimes you just have rooms looking at you like, well, at least he learned Italian. That is. <laughs> bueno for him. Um, wait, when the second lockdown came around, right, I was like, I should probably lose this weight. And I was dieting and, and trying all these new foods. And uh, I tried mussels. Uh, so I, I eat mussels now. Uh, so I guess it is true what they say. Mm -hmm. You are what you eat. And I'm a shell of a man. Um, <laughs> this makes sense. I uh, feel like this sort of low point for me, though, is when I went on this motivational website and found this story about a guy who ate a plane. Um, have you heard about this guy? Yeah, there's a couple of people nodding, right? So, like, uh, his name, I think he's known as Monsieur Mange Tout. Uh, which, as we know, translates to big tubby boy. Uh, same joke, same joke both times, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, I thought this guy was amazing, right? So he, he ground up the plane and he ate it over the course of like two years. And um, I think that's amazing because that just shows that, you know, with dedication and applying yourself to something consistently, just a little bit each day, a little bit each day, a little bit each day, that you can achieve nothing of any value. <laughs> Like, why do he do that? He's like every success story in reverse, you know? Most of these motivational speakers are like, I started with nothing, and now I have my own plane. <laughs> He's like, I had a plane. I got a tummy ache. <laughs> So uh, it's, it's lovely, you're a lovely audience. I, I love gigging in London. I love London people. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about um, the most London thing I've ever heard. Um, I was on the tube a couple of weeks back and uh, the tube driver came over the tannoy um, and he said, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about the delay, but at the next platform, somebody's decided to give birth. <laughs> And all of us just looked at each other like, that is so selfish. <laughs> but he was so grumpy about it. Like, I genuinely thought he was going to end his announcement with, see it, say it, abort it. I really, I really did. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know, like, you know, perhaps, perhaps it was intentional. We don't know, like, you know, the, the sort of, the key word there is decided, you know? Like, decided to do it. I mean, you know, maybe there is this mum somewhere just sort of going, oh, I'd like a natural birth. You know, ideally a birthing pool, um, and somewhere on the Metropolitan Line, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like to picture at home, you know, a partner runs in, like, you know, her water's breaker, should I call an ambulance? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. 
get my Oyster card. <laughs> we don't want to miss rush hour. She waddles out. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I wanted to end on an uplifting note, um, just a story about uh, the best comeback I've ever heard um, to a homophobic insult. Um, I, was, I was on a date a couple of weeks back um, with a guy in Queensway, which is around sort of Hyde Park. Um, and the guy I was with, he's very sort of flamboyant, very eccentric, very comfortable in his own skin. Um, and these two guys stood out in front of us, um, and one of them said, why are there so many gays around here? Um, and I froze. I, I didn't really know what to say. I'm, I'm not good in situations like that. Um, but my date, without skipping a beat, goes, because you're in fabulous Queensway. <laughs> now get out of this fabulous Queensway. <laughs> and he walks through him. <laughs> How good is that? Honestly, in that moment, I fell for him a little bit. I was like, how did you, how did you do that? You know? And he said, well, to be honest with you, uh, people have been rude to me most of my life. Right? Um, and I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry people have been rude to you just because you're gay. Um, and he said, no, not because I'm gay, because uh, I'm a waiter. <laughs> so we're all invited to the wedding. Guys, you've been wonderful. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm George Sutherland. <laughs>